XML mill is a GUI based XML editor that remembers relationships between XML elements, attributes and also known attribute values. And the way it does this is through the use of profiles. Now the first time you start the application you will be presented with a screen that looks similar to this one. Um, since you don't have any profiles yet, it's a simple matter of creating a new one. And once we've switched to that profile to make it the active profile, you'll be prompted to import XML from file. Now you do not have to do this, it is possible to create XML profiles manually, but since I've got XML files available already, this is the route that I'm going to take. Now, this part of the process is resource intensive. What XML mill is currently doing is it's passing this document and extracting all relationship information from it. Now this might take a little while, depending on the complexity and the size of the document itself. I suggest that you don't use really large XML documents with XML mill maybe up to about a megabyte in size, um, but even then the performance might be drastically affected. Once we've completed the import, we open the file for editing, and you can see now that on the left hand side we've got a tree hierarchy of all the elements that exist in the document, and on the right hand side here we see the actual XML. Now, if you want to know which element is associated with what attributes, it's a simple matter of hovering over the, the relevant element itself in the tree view, and if you want to make this information permanent, you also have the option to show the tree elements of a bows. Since I'm working on a rather small monitor, this is perhaps a little bit cluttered for now, so I'll stick to the non verbose version. Um, and since we're on the topic of options, if you don't like the default GUI theme, you're also welcome to use the dark theme. I've personally found that on Windows 7, this is actually the better option since the contrast between the different elements is more pronounced. For now, uh, however, again, we'll stick to the default um, something else that is worth knowing is that you can customize the layout um, and when you close the application XML mill will remember this particular layout setting the next time you start this up. Another interesting point is that you can actually undock the document plane itself and move it around either within the application or what I like to do is to move it onto a separate monitor um, to make the viewing a little bit easier. Again, if you don't want this geometry information to be stored you can choose not to remember window geometry. Uh, another thing that's worth knowing is that XML mill has all these little help buttons scattered throughout the application that will give you context specific help whenever you get stuck. If you get to a point where you feel you're comfortable with XML mill, again you do have the option to hide these help buttons from you. Okay, so document editing, selecting an element in the document itself will highlight the corresponding element in the tree and you'll also notice that it populates a table in the center here with all the active attributes as well as lists of, of the attributes known values. Um, changing any of these values um, will update the document in real time. You will notice that the, that the values change as I cycle through these options. Um, and obviously you can also add additional attributes. Once the attribute is added, you can give it an actual value. It's also perhaps worth pointing out that all these kinds of changes are additive by default. So if you do end up adding attributes and adding values, this information gets propagated to the profile itself. Um, nothing is deleted by default. In order to delete anything or to make destructive changes, you have to specifically go and, and execute these changes. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Other editing options available? You can right click on a tree item itself. You have some limited options as to what you can and cannot do here. If you wish to rename an element, you must please be aware that it will rename not just that individual element, but all elements of that name throughout the entire document. You can also move elements up a level, which means it will become a sibling of its parent. Um, you can also simply click and drag elements around. It is possible to add elements to elements of the same name. Should you do this by accident, again, this relationship that now was created is uh, pushed to the profile. So if you want to get rid of this relationship later on, you'll have to manually go and remove it. Adding elements to documents can be done in one of two different ways. You can either add individual elements as children to the highlighted element itself, or you can add entire snippets. Now, the snippets can be rather complex, depending on the snippet that you choose. You will see that you have an entire parent-child hierarchy um, showing on the left-hand side. Once again, you can select which elements you want to have included in the snippet. Obviously you can populate the snippet's attribute values with whatever defaults you want to have assigned to them. Um, and once you've created this entire snippet, simply add it to the document. 
since this is quite a complex snippet, I'm not going to go through the process of filling in all the necessary values. I'd rather show you something slightly simpler. So let's say we want to add an entire snippet, or even multiple snippets. We can decide what we want the default values to be. Um, and let's say we want to add five snippets of this type to the document. We also have the option to increment specific values. And uh, in this case, what will happen is that this attribute value will start off at 1, and on each iteration for each snippet addition, this value will be incremented with 1. Uh, to show you what I mean, as soon as the snippets have been added to the document, you'll notice that having started at steering wheel instance 1, we then had instance 2, 3, 4, and 5. In the document pane, we have a number of limited options yet again. You cannot edit the XML directly. Um, the entire point of XML mill is to restrict edits to what's known to the profile. Um, however, there are a number of things that you can do. Let's say that you've got an active section of XML that you no longer want to have included in the document. Uh, we can select this and simply comment it out. As you noticed on the left hand side, it was removed from the hierarchy. It also is no longer at an active part in the XML itself. If you wish to revert these changes, simply select it again, right click and uncomment the selection. When it comes to the destructive changes that I discussed earlier on, um, let's say we want to go and revert this relationship that was that was introduced between these, well, with this element and itself. What we need to do first is to close the active document. And the reason for this is that the profile in the document must always remain in sync. So what will happen if we start editing the profile with an active document is obviously that the document will no longer match the information in the profile itself and we'll run into all kinds of trouble. So before we can continue we have to close the document that we've been editing and then simply going to edit, edit profile, remove items. On the left hand side here once again by the by now familiar element hierarchy. This does not represent an ac active document but simply the information in the profile You'll notice that when you hover on over these elements that there are no values assigned to the attributes themselves. Um, for interest sake, if we click on any of these elements, you'll have a drop-down list of its associated attributes, and also all the known values associated with any particular attribute will be displayed in this text box. It's a simple matter of removing, or, or adding if you want, attribute values from this list. Um, as soon as you hit update attributes, that information is propagated once again to the profile. Uh, just want to draw your attention again to the help button, so if you do get stuck, you also have the option to delete entire attributes. This attribute will now no longer be associated with this particular element. Um, on the element side, we have the option to either delete an element completely or to remove it from its parent. In this case, we'll only be allowed to remove it from its parent. There are a number of practical reasons for it. Uh, if you do want to delete it completely, you'll have to first remove it from its parent. As you can notice now, there's no longer a parent-child relationship that exists here. Um, if you still want to delete the element completely, deleting it will remove it from the profile and from all relevant lists. Well, that's it in a nutshell. To end off, this is a work in progress. It's very possible that you will encounter bugs or that things may not work as well as you'd like or not the way you expected it to work um, for these scenarios and f well for any other reason actually whatsoever please feel free to drop me a line you're welcome to visit the official website there is a contact form on that site that you can use to get in touch with me so if you run into any trouble if you have any feature requests please drop me a line I'd greatly appreciate it thanks for watching